This is going to be a walkthrough of the Model S Plaid or other 2021 versions of Model S and soon to be Model X user interface. Quite a bit different than the original uh, user interface that you might be used to in a Model S from 2012 onwards or Model Y and 3 as well. You still have your same uh, general layout with map and media or whatever you might prefer and the vehicle controls button in the bottom right that gets you to a lot of your different menus controls there's some other ones pedals and steering suspension there's some adjustments on this one you've got your gear selector which you can slide up or downwards charging autopilot locks etc a bunch of the other features um, i find easy to access here and you can either click on it to get out or tap outside. Your climate control ends up being down here. You tap it, that can turn it on. You have your temperature adjustments, of course. You get some other settings or you can swipe it up. And then you've got all these me uh, modes. No passenger here currently, so pretty neat but it doesn't blow the air conditioning on that side uh, I'm actually not sure cool if you touch it it'll actually turn it on over there as well um, but your normal controls bioweapon defense mode recirculate the air you can schedule it to stay on keep it on if you're parked somewhere camping or uh, the beloved dog mode you can see it drops down there after a while uh, but this is where you'll need to come into to access a lot of um, the climate control uh, buttons. The auto works really great, um, but you really need to go into this menu to do mu do anything. You've got your heated seats there, and then all this stuff, power on or off, that works fine and great. The ventilated seats works in conjunction with the automatic Climate control, which is a super cool feature, I find. You have a little bit of custom customizability with this. You can drag media down to get more of a map view. Pretty helpful. We can search for destinations. We can type the airport here. We'll see that plotted. Wicked screen, biggest navigation um, that I've seen in a vehicle. And much bigger and better than 3 and Y because you have your instrument cluster in front of you as a driver so the entire 17 inch screen which is bigger can be used for navigation uh, on its own you can end that as well so there is a little bit of customizability you can drag things around this makes it a little bit easier to get to but you might prefer the map a bit closer awesome customization there if it's down and minimized, I don't think you're able to drag it, so you do have to bring this up and over, like so. I actually prefer it on the right. And then you've got your phone. Uh, expands the media. You can go into streaming your phone, etc. You can push that down and away. You got your backup cameras. If you don't use the side cameras, um, it's really cool how big this can be when it takes up the entire screen. Uh, I think for now, because we're not in drive, it's only letting us do a portion of it. You can click the app again, it goes away. You have some different options here. It's where you get into your toy box, gaming, messages, Spotify, calendar, etc. Here's your entertainment, some quick apps. I think in the future, you will be able to drag some of these icons, hold icons to customize. There you go. You can just hold them and drag and drop, depending on what you might prefer. So we can X out of some favorites, general media. I don't really use the camera, um, but we do hop into streaming. And let's see how many we can maybe get in there. Um, see if we can add another one. Very cool. And 
Yeah, so you can really add quite a few and it'll kind of minimize over here on the right. But I think that's pretty good for now. So calendar, phone, streaming, or general media, and then you could get specifically to Spotify. So that's pretty pretty helpful. Tap again, it goes away. Again, that full menu. You've got volume here. I generally find it easier to do, do volume on the screen than tap the button. Then you do have this switch back and forth if you didn't want to drag and drop. And within the menus, pedals and steering, that's where you have your plat acceleration, sport, or chill. I think the 0 to 60 drops to about 9 seconds in chill versus 1.99 here in plaid. The stiffness of steering, if you want that auto park where it guesses using AI, if you should be in drive or reverse. Suspension is pretty neat and unique on Model S and soon to be X. You have adaptive suspension with damping. I like auto, it's going to adjust it stiffer if you're driving a little bit more spiritedly. Or it could be softer if you want more comfort. Advanced gives you customize, customization there. And you get some really cool data uh, and detail if you want that through this menu. And then you can see with these orange and green lines some some active um, action from what the suspension's feeling. Pretty awesome. Charging, you set your levels, change amperage, schedule, supercharging costs. That's all typical. Autopilot menu, I find the cruise follow dis distance at three is awesome. Auto steer beta, that's where it's keeping you between the lanes. That's on. Do you want to activate it with one click or two? I think double click's great because it makes it a little bit more meaningful if you actually do turn it on. Full self-driving preview lets you see all the cars and street lights and stop signs along the road as well as other cars. And then set speed. When you turn on autopilot, what do you want it to default to? I have it to default to five over. You can easily adjust that here. When do you want the speed limit to warn you? I have that at 9 over, so not until you exceed 9 over will it either chime or just uh, bring your attention to the fact that you might be going a little bit quick. Forward collision warning, when's that alerting you of an impact or somebody slowing down in front of you? Early's pretty early. I think late's a bit too late. I generally do keep it on medium, but if you want to be a bit more conservative, early is great. Lane departure avoidance, assist, this bumps you back into the lane. I think all the safety features on are the way to go. It's only going to help you or whoever's driving the vehicle and uh, preventing any accident is certainly a good thing. Locks, do you want the car to lock when you walk away, the handles to pop out, child locks, window locks, etc. Do you want it to lock, uh, unlock when you put it in park? Closing the windows on lock, awesome feature. Uh, Elon likes to mention that any input is error, so now, you know, there's essentially nothing you have to do to drive this car, and soon nothing, in fact, but you could just get out of the car when you're done driving it and leave. It's going to put it in park, lock the doors, roll the windows up, all that great stuff. Automatic lights, pretty simple. Display. This is where you've got your time. Your energy dis displays is showing you distance or percentage. I much prefer distance. I think mileage makes the most sense in a car versus percentage. How far can I go? Can I make it to my destination, etc. Trips. Showing us our distance in miles. Uh, energy used. 13, 132 kilowatt hours. Average energy. This plaid's going to be a little bit higher at 392 watt hours per mile. I think we'll see that... Uh, I think we're um, going to see that closer to 400 or so, uh, maybe on normal driving in the low 300s. Navigation settings, um, pretty simple. What do you want the volume at? Do you want it to reroute you if there's traffic? Do you want to avoid anything? All that stuff's good. Safety, sentry mode on or off, dash cam, automatic. It's basically just recording. When it when you honk the horn, is it gonna is it gonna make sure it saves that data? You can put a pin to drive, glove box pin, etc. All that is good stuff. Your service menu, and then what software version, your odometer, all that good stuff. 
Uh, that is essentially it. Pretty straightforward. Normal Bluetooth connections. Up at the top there, your home link, Wi-Fi, name of the car, driver profile settings. Um, typical with any Tesla, where that's going to remember your, your seats, your driving modes, all that good stuff. Pretty intuitive, uh, a little bit of getting used to. It is quite a bit different than the others. So I thought it'd be helpful to do a quick walkthrough on it. And uh, if you want to see anything in more detail, certainly let me know. Take care.